Here with Saratoga leading jockey, Irad Ortiz. Irad, we want to know the history behind, you know, you and your brother, Jose, both jockeys. Tell me about how did this all start? Who was the first to make the idea? Uh, who's the first idea was it that you wanted to be a jockey? It seems like you both wanted to be him as a kid. And then the whole process of going through school in Puerto Rico and, and ending up in New York. Uh, I was the first one who get on, get, get into a school, jockey school. Uh, we growing up, both wants to be a jockey. Uh, the process was two years. Uh, we learned how to groom the horses. We start, we start jogging the horses. Then we, we gallop. We learn every day and start working with the horses for two years, getting better, try to get better every day. And here we are. What's that conversation with your parents as a kid? That you want to be a jockey it's not necessarily the safest of occupations you know is there any concern uh my dad always was uh, agree with us uh he want us to go to school but he was agree when when i was 16 he said that's what you want to do so go for it i'm here for you and my mom too but she was a little more more uh worry about us because uh it was a it's a dangerous sport but uh in the end of the day she understand that what we love to do and, and she let us do it so arguably you're, you're you're the top jockey in the world right now. Um, it's it's amazing what you've done in your years since you came here. But what really amazes when you look at the stats is when you came here, you were a 20% win rider your third year here. Really quickly, you moved up. You know, what did you do that really got you to that top level right away within, you know, three years of coming to America? I got the, the help from the trainers and owner back, I mean, here in New York. I start here. I was here by my, I, I came out of the school in January 1st, 2011, and I was here already in, in June, April. I was here already. Uh, I start working. I start working for everybody. I mean, uh, every single trainer that called me, I was there for them. And still, today, so whoever wants me, I'm there, and I try to do my best. Uh, I work for them. If I can ride the horse, uh, I, I ride them. And uh, I mean, a lot of dedication. I was there every single day. I'm, I'm still here. They give me the opportunity and, and, and I can make it happen. I mean, if I got the right horse, uh, maybe I can show what I can do. And they give me the opportunity. Trainers and owners give me the confidence. So that's, that's the whole key. I mean, it's really remarkable in terms of the big races you've won. You know, if you had to put on one race that you would love to win again, what would it be? I never win the Derby. I would love to win that one. But if I have to win one again, uh, maybe the British Cup Classic, British Cup Turf. That's was one of my favorite races. I grew up watching the British Cups. That was maybe the, the only races when I was a kid uh, I, I see it on and watch U.S. races, because I always watch races in Puerto Rico. But British Cup races, we all we, we always watch in NBC and, and watch those kind of races, and it was a dream for me. So for me, it's one of my favorite days when we run the British Cup races. That for me is very special, any, any one of, of, of the British Cup races. You, you're such a fierce competitor, and we see that all the time. It's just you love to win, and you work really hard to win. You know, what do you do to prep for races in terms of, is it watching film? Is it PPs? Is it working the horse? You know, what do you do to get yourself? Because it seems like over and over again, you know exactly what the horse wants to do, when it wants to do it, and how it wants to do it. I try to handicap the horse, my horse first, and ride my horse, try to find what my horse wants. I handicap the race. Handicap every single horse I can. If I think I have to beat somebody, somebody hit the horse to beat, try to see what the horse like, what the horse don't like, and try to get advantage of it. Uh, I'm, I'm handicap every single day. Every I, I can get out of there without without study the race. Uh, we are competitive. We all do. I guess every single jockey have to have that inside of them because you go out there nine, ten times and. It's all about winning. Trainer wants to win, the owner wants to win, and you have to try to win all of them. So it's not easy, but that's, that's the way we try to, that's, that's what we try to do out there. Two more quick questions for you. One, um, this coming weekend in the Travers, you know, how you feel in the getting uh, opportunity for Trav Brown's first Travers? I'm excited. I never win that race before. I would love to. Uh, I got a horse with good chance with Chad Brown. 
horse doing great. Uh, he only have three three races, but uh, last time was a little impressive. Jump from the mile to mile and eight. Uh, he do everything right. He break good. He seat switch off for me, and he was there whenever I want to. I want to pick it up. He respond really well. He listened to me. Uh, he have a great mind, and that's very important in young horses. And last question for you. I know you don't want to necessarily put it on one horse, but top win of all time for you. What was what was that win that you said I made it? I'm a top jockey now. I mean, my first win, my first great one win was Questing, and it wasn't easy because uh, I don't have the experience and only have two years riding here. And the trainer Kiara McLarkin decided to give me the opportunity. A lot of jockey with experience was open in the race, and they want to ride the Philly. And he said, "No, we're gonna give the chance to I ride. If we don't give a chance, how we know if he can ride the good horses, great one horse races?" So. He gave me the opportunity and thank God uh, everything worked out good. And after that, everybody started giving me some better chances. And that's the first, first one. And I think that was, that was the first step. Congratulations on being the leading jockey. Good luck this weekend. I Rider T's leading 2022 Sarah Mir Toga Meet Jockey. Thank you very much. Oh, come on, back in the come on barn. You have Gufo going tomorrow, winner last year in the same race. Um, what did you guys learn out of the United Nations? I think we should put a pair of blinkers back on him. He fell a little bit out of contention. A pair of blinkers will hopefully help Gerald to be a little bit closer to stay in contact with the field. And then um, he always has a great turn of foot, so as long as he's able to uh, replicate the same turn of foot he's always had, I think a pair of blinkers should help us. This longer distance here, is this really what you guys are looking for in this horse? Yeah, he could do anything, mile and quarter to mile and a half. He's very versatile, Gufo. It's just a question of timing is right, uh, run at the right time, and um, hopefully not being too far out of contention with them in the earlier stages. Last thing for you, in terms of weather, we're expecting a little bit of rain possibly today. Would that cut in the turf really improve him here? Uh, he's one on a very, very firm turf, uh, Gulf Stream, for instance. Uh, he's also one on the softest turf. I don't think the ground impacts him, to be honest with you. He handles, he's very versatile, I could handle any sort of ground. So the biggest question is does that ground handles, uh, would it, you know, and feed other horses more than us. Uh, I'm not sure about that either. Yeah, I think Broom's coming in the race. He's handled soft turf. Channel Maker also excels on it. So um, uh, I think it's irrelevant. Uh, rains or if it, uh, sun makes no impact for him. Seems like we have a superstar field for this race this year. Good luck tomorrow. That's going to be tough, but we'll try our best. Thanks. Cox has Cyberknife going tomorrow in the Travers. Brad, I have to ask you, what did you learn about the horse out of that Mammoth race? Well, I mean, it was a big effort. He, um, you know, showed that he's, um, you know, capable of obviously competing at the grade one level with having picked up his second grade one of the year. And, uh, you know, he overcome a lot. And I thought Florent rode him with a lot of confidence, gave him a target, uh, set against him. Uh, he re really responded when asked. And, uh, you know, it was, it was a very positive race. I mean, it was a race that showed me he belongs with the top three-year-olds in the country. In terms of training, how about the horse been looked in the last two weeks coming into this? Really good. He's had two good moves here. He's had three works total on the main track, and his last two have been really good moves. That you know we asked him to do something, and he responded well. Come out of him in good order. He scored great yesterday. So uh, you know we've done as much with him as we can do, and he seems to be just as good now as he was. Maybe even better leading into the Haskell. So uh, excited about the opportunity. In terms of the surface change here, uh, Mammoth runs a little bit different than Saratoga's ran all over the place we'll, we'll say so far this saratoga meet any concerns with how this uh, track's been you know speeding up slowing down inside's yeah. good inside's bad right yeah it's always a concern you just hope you're in the right part of it i suppose and you know i'm hopeful for a, a tight racetrack and uh, one that's not super tiring or laboring um you know i mean look he's fit we can't do anything anymore with him of the mornings to to increase his fitness i mean he, he's he's a fit happy racehorse so um i just think he has to get the trip and hopefully you know we got a good fair racetrack to run on Brad Cox on Haskell Winner Cyberknife going in the Travers tomorrow. Good luck. Thank you. Appreciate it.